Hey folks, how's everybody doing out there? In this video, I want to talk about the value of simplicity in web development, something that I think is often overlooked in the days of JavaScript frameworks and virtual DOMs. Now, uh, I've been on the web a long, long time. I wrote my first web page in 1992, and I never really looked back. I love the web. And one of the things that made building websites such a joy was that web browsers were, and still are, an incredibly tolerant, forgiving platform. If any of you have spent any time writing code in C or Java or C Sharp, you'll know that those languages can be incredibly strict. You miss one little semicolon and the compiler's like, no, you've made a mistake. I will not even attempt to run this program because you are stupid. But browsers, browsers are friendly. Even if you have no idea what you're doing, a web browser is going to try really hard to make sense of what you're giving it. Let's, let's try it. Let's make a web page here. We're going to give our web page a head element. And then uh, if it's got a head, it probably needs a face, right? And then a body. And we know headings can go inside H1 tags, so we can add those. And now we'll put something here in red and a line break and something in blue. Let's, let's add a picture of Mac. Image source equals cat. Name equals Mac. Likes equals snack. And then we'll close the body, and then if we've got a head and a body, we probably need feet as well, right? So we'll put in some feet, and then we'll close it with slash htlm. You folks out there who build websites for a living are probably shuddering in horror right now, but you know what? This works. Go on, check it out. It's at dylanbt.net slash cat, and it looks like this. Now, that's not quite right, but it's something to go on. And so now I can go and hack it around and try things out and get this very immediate visual feedback that'll show me what's changed. And I find that a really, really powerful way to learn new technology. It's exactly how I learned to build websites back in the 1990s. But I think it's also an interesting example of something called Postel's Law. John Postel was uh, one of the people who helped to invent the internet. One of the things he wrote was the original specification for TCP IP way back in 1980. And in that spec, he included this recommendation to people implementing the spec. Be conservative in what you send, be liberal in what you accept. When you're sending requests, don't send bizarre edge cases and stuff which is technically correct and expect it to work. But if you receive requests with weird edge cases, give it your best shot at trying to figure out what those requests are actually asking for. There's, there's actually a wonderful example of this principle, which has nothing to do with the web or computers. In 1975, at the height of the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union collaborated on a joint space mission called Apollo Soyuz. An American Apollo spacecraft and a Soviet Soyuz would rendezvous in orbit, dock, and uh, they took this amazing photograph of the two commanders, Alexei Leonov and Tom Stafford, shaking hands through the airlock. They had to solve a bunch of technical challenges for that mission, but they also had to contend with a language barrier, because most of the cosmonauts spoke only Russian, most of the astronauts spoke only English. So both crews went for several months of intensive language training, and the rule during the mission was that the Americans had to speak Russian, and the Russians had to reply in English. The mission planners realized that somebody speaking a foreign language to a native speaker was much less likely to lead to misunderstandings than somebody trying to listen to a foreign language. The fairly limited vocabulary they had after three months of training meant they were forced to be conservative in what they sent, and the fact that they were listening to their own native language meant they could be liberal in what they accepted. And uh, that was me when I first started writing HTML. I was like Tom Stafford trying to speak Russian, and the Netscape browser was Alexei Leonov being patient and supportive and helping me figure out what I got wrong. And I think that that, you know, as much as anything else, that was a vital factor in the success of the web. We could learn HTML by writing stuff in Notepad and looking at it in a browser, and instead of cryptic error messages, we'd get something. Browsers were 
always incredibly liberal in what they'd accept. And for most of my career, I've tried to uphold the other half of that recommendation and be conservative in what I send. Don't do weird stuff and expect it to work. Now, the web has always been full of weird hacks and proprietary extensions and edge cases, Java applets, Flash, Silverlight, plugins. For a while there, there was a thing called the Browser Wars, where the two dominant browsers, Netscape and Internet Explorer, they supported completely different programming models. But if you look past all that stuff, at the heart of the web is a set of standards and protocols, HTML, HTTP, CSS, JavaScript. And it turns out that sites which embraced those standards instead of fighting them have stood the test of time way better than any of the exciting plugins and extensions. I used to make 3D models of Star Wars ships for fun. Yeah, I told you, I was, I was that kind of nerd. And I made a little website so that people could see them and download them. And you can still visit that website today. It's here, it's at dylanbt.net slash Star Wars. Um, if you go ahead and open up that site. Now, if you were born after 1997, this website is older than you. And I, I don't mean like it's been maintained. I mean, I have not touched the code for this site at all since before you were born. And it still works. And here's the source code. Yep, this is how we wrote HTML back in 1997. And 25 years later, the browser running on your mobile phone, that's a device that didn't even exist when I wrote this code, it can understand and it can render that site just fine. If I built that site using Flash or Java applets or lots of complicated dynamic HTML, it would have stopped working years ago. But plain old static HTML, I think that site will probably still work just fine in another 25 years. Folks, thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Take it easy. Look after each other. Be careful out there, and I'll see you next time.